guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and behind me here is the new 2020 Shelby GT500. And so I wanted to show this to you guys. I'm gonna do a quick walk around here, giving you what I personally know. We don't know everything yet. Second part of the video, we're gonna let the chief engineer tell you guys about it. So that's gonna be cool too, but let's check it out. It's the first thing I wanted to tell you guys is that this is the biggest Cobra emblem that Ford has ever put on a Shelby Cobra, so that is pretty cool. And of course, you have the Shelby etched into the bottom just like the GT350. This is where it gets interesting on the side. This is for ventilation. You can actually see behind it there. You also have a bunch of aerodynamic cues added to the GT500. And if you didn't know already, they're using the 1517 style headlights because it worked better with the carbon fiber frame in the front. That is why they're not using the 1819 headlights up there. And of course, hood pins are needed for a car that goes over 200 miles per hour. Then you have the gloss black heat extractor with a rain shield underneath, which can be completely removed if you were to go to the track, I think it looks pretty good. Some people have said the gloss black kind of smudges a little bit, maybe, but you know what? It ties in with the side mirrors. If you're gonna do gloss black, at least it just wasn't on the hood only and they tied it in with the gloss mirror, so that's good. Taking a look at the brake setup, you guys see the aluminum hats. They're of course lighter weight and the carbon fiber wheels. And you guys know GT350 had the carbon fiber wheels, but this, is the exposed weave, and that is pretty cool. I always thought it was kind of interesting that the GT350 didn't expose the weave, it was just black, basically. Couldn't really tell they were carbon fiber, although they were, but definitely love the look of the carbon fiber wheels. And these are six piston Brembos, by the way, and because the rotors are so freaking huge, Ford had to use 20 inch wheels as opposed to 19 inch wheel setup. So that was kind of forced upon them. Learned that earlier today, that was pretty cool. Once again, Cobra emblem on the side. These side skirts are from the GT350, but with that added for the GT500. Now I don't know if you guys can see inside, but that little circular dial there, that kind of reminds me of the Ford Fusion, but we'll see how it ends up being. But the coolest part about this is magnesium paddle shifters right behind this steering wheel. They're not the plastic paddle shifters that you find on even luxury brands like Audi. They use plastic paddle shifters, but they're magnesium in the GT500, so that fits very well. Make your way to the back. This is the carbon fiber rear spoiler, and this thing is gigantic, and it is completely adjustable, as you guys can see as well. And then the Cobra, once again, in the back, and this is a unique rear splitter for the GT500. You guys have probably noticed it doesn't look like the GT350, doesn't look like the GT, and these exhaust tips back here, they're not four inches like the GT or the GT350. They are five inch exhaust tips. They are massive. And they look right at home on the GT500 actually. So it definitely fits well. And so although this hood isn't open, let me show you a clip from earlier today. Underneath the hood is a 5.2 liter supercharged V8. It is not the same 5.2 liter as the GT350 has. It is actually a cross plane crank as opposed to the flat plane crank that the GT350 uses. But Either way, it comes with a 2.65 liter Eaton supercharger. All in all, Ford says it's gonna put out over 700 horsepower, zero to 60 in mid three second range, over 200 mile per hour top speed. And of course the price is still yet to be determined. That is not available quite yet, but you guys can see it here, 700 plus horsepower. That's about all we know at this point, but that could be 800, who knows? So on the inside, it still uses the digital gauge cluster like on the new GTs. There is the SYNC 3 system up front there. That is definitely nice as well. And so that is about everything I know, at least about the new GT500. So let me get you guys to the second part of the video, the chief engineer of the whole thing. This is probably gonna be a lot more explanatory than what I had to offer there, but anyways. For those of you who don't know, performance founded Ford Motor Company in 1901, at the Gross Point Big Farm Speedway, Alexander Winton, the reigning champion, went down in flames to Henry Ford and Spider Huff, his crew chief, in a car called Sweepstakes. He was the reigning champion. Henry had already put one company into the ground. He'd moved back in with his wife to his family. He was working for a gentleman that we might know by the name of Thomas Edison, but he still had a dream to put the America back on wheels. And so what did he do? He took a car and wanted to prove it through performance to be able to get funding to start Ford Motor Company or whatever ended up being Ford Motor Company. He won the race. He won the race through innovation and technology. His car was not faster, 
but it ended up being a little bit more durable on the dirt track that they were running on because of the stuff that he put around his firing mechanism. Today, what we call a spark plug, but that was one of his first innovations from performance that actually led to three investors coming out of the stands to give him the money and starting the company called Ford Motor Company 18 months later. So performance and car enthusiasts like you started Ford Motor Company, and on behalf of Ford, the Ford Performance Team, and the Ford family, we want to say thank you. We really appreciate being here. Um, this is my, I think, 18th Carlisle. I know Ford has been coming, we think, since about 1998, and we want to continue to be here every year. What we want to be able to do, though, is introduce the Shelby GT500. Um, we are so proud of this. I don't know how much you know about the history, but when Mustang started and Lee Iacocca and the Ford Fairlane Committee came up with the Mustang as a white space car, one that wasn't out there before, as a touring car for the folks returning from the war who had more disposable income. Now, it wasn't initially a race car. So Carroll Shelby and his merry band of hot rodders took that Mustang in 65, made a GT350 competition model that we all call the R car now, and went on to win SCCA Production B in 65 and 66. Now you had Parnelli and the Boss 302s, you had the legendary IMSA cars. From that point in time, Mustang came not only as a road course car, but as a drag strip car. Solid rear axle, you know, put the 410 in the back of it when you go out there and go to Milan down there and run quarter mile hole shots. So the car that started out as a touring car became a performance vehicle. Now, Carol, with the GT350, it was left and right, it was a road course car. He came out with a GT500 a few years later that had things like a radio and air conditioning, you know, those minor creature comforts in there. But that was known as a straight line car. You know, in the ads that Carroll did back in the day, he had ads that said, Le Mans inspired engine that in here for the power plant. This was not a car that was to go left and right. It was more of a vehicle for a straight line and performance that people could enjoy comfortably on the road. Fast forward to 07, when we launched the, the, this last generation of Shelby GT500s, and you know, we came out and said, eh, it's gonna have 450 horsepower. Oh, it's gonna have 475 horsepower. Oh, and then when we launched it, it had 500 horsepower. Now that car was a straight line car. You could take it to the road course. You could have fun in it, but it was more designed as straight line and creature comfort performance. So you have 07, you have the 08 KR, you have the 11, the 12, the 662 horsepower fire breathing monster that was the 13 and 14. Um, we were talking today, um, Ed and I were talking about when we did the parade here, I got in a little bit of trouble because I did smoky burnouts all the way down the street in that car. Um, but that car was 200 mile an hour. It could go on the road courses, but again, top speed, straight line, and creature comfort. So enter Carl Whitman, Ford Performance, and the merry band of engineers that we have today. And the 2020 Shelby GT500 is not your grandma's and grandpa's GT500. This car, now we don't have the horsepower yet, so we're not going to make that announcement today, but we are saying 700 plus horsepower is not only going to be a straight line car we're talking zero to 60 in the mid threes we're talking sub 11 second quarter miles after you drive it directly out of your dealership and to the myelin drag strip sub 11s and i can't wait till people actually get it to go out there and do that so it meets its criteria of good creature comforts and a good straight line however it also happens to be the fastest production road course Mustang we have ever done. So not only does it go straight and fast, it is also a world-class road course vehicle. 
and here to tell you how the magic that happened in that GT500 is the Ford Performance Chief Engineer, Mustang Chief, Carl Whitman. Carl, can you tell them about the car? Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. So as Jim said, there's a, there's a relatively large team that actually puts together vehicles like this, and it's my uh, opportunity today and honor to uh, represent that team. Uh, we're still working on the car. Uh, I'll be flying out to Arizona on Monday to do the final calibration work for the transmission. So when you think about this car, what we want to accomplish with it, you can think about it a couple of different ways, right? It has to be the pinnacle of the Gen 6 Mustang. So the best of the best with the independent rear, the new front suspension we have. You can think about it also from what Jim was talking about on the heritage of the GT500. It's really putting a marker down in the pony wars, right? This has got to be the best of the best that the Mustang can bring forward. So it's representing not only Mustang and Ford Performance, but the entire identity of the Mustang. So when we go into something that serious, there's a lot of people who put a lot of effort to bring the best of the best for technology. So as we laid this vehicle out, if you look at it, there's a tremendous amount of design work to make it look aggressive, but all that design work is tied to aerodynamics. And then the engine, transmission, totally new. So we knew we had to drive this car as fast as possible on the track. So in those ways, we need both a powertrain, but we also have to get the rear wheels on the ground for grip. So it all was around fast arrow we can get, but style it at the same time, and the most power we can get out of a forced induction 5.2 liter. So as you think through the block and everything else that had to happen, so we go to a cylinder that's taking 1,800 PSI pressure at peak power. So in essence, the block we started with, which we love in the GT350, we had to tear it up, redo it, longer head bolts, more ribbing, bigger bearings, and we actually cascade that back into the 19 Shelby. So the block itself had to be improved to get that strength we needed with that extra pressure. And the cylinder heads are all new and unique to the GT500, new valve train, new seals, new everything for cam timing, so totally new heads on it to get that maximum amount of power. And the real life breather of it is a 2.65 liter supercharger, and that's kind of crazy, right? So we sell an EcoBoost on the base program that's only 2.3 liters, and yet we put a supercharger on our 5.2 to then drive that horsepower and torque through the system. So that supercharger ends up at 12 PSI boost. So that is really the blood of the system that's driving that forced induction to get you that torque, get you that horsepower out of the system. So what we found out with that much torque, we just we needed a totally new transmission. So we worked with our partners at Tremec and the transmission of this vehicle is that joint development, all new. And we, it's a DCT transmission. So same general stuff we use that on a transaxle in the GT program, but in this case it's not a transaxle, it's bolted to the rear face of block. And then DCTs, the way, way to think about them is an electrically controlled manual transmission, right? It's not like an automatic that we use in the 10-speed transmissions in the base Mustangs. It has the capability to drive torque immediately to the wheels, right? So we don't have to have any break in that action, but we can do it in 100 milliseconds. And that's key, right? To get that speed on the road course, we need to go from gear to gear to gear as quick as possible and not lose any torque. So not only we needed a new transmission for an upgrade to handle all the torque to the wheels, because a lot of things we do on Mustang is we're really driving the maximum amount of torque to the wheel, right? We want the power and the torque at the wheel, not just advertisable. So the totally new Tremec transmission, a DCT, uh, gives us that capability to then have the right gear in and out of the corner rapidly as we use either track setting, but it also we can change that setting as we go to drag, and we give you the maximum amount of torque as you go through a drag in a straight line. And so that ability with an electrically controlled system to set up that power for your event at the best times possible just driving it out of the dealership. So that integration of the powertrain is key. And then we had so much torque, we actually had to put a carbon fiber drag shaft in, so that's new for the vehicle. Uh, all new bigger half shafts, which is amazing that my Mustang team can create even bigger half shafts every time we do a vehicle. And then when you get to the tires, you'll notice we got a huge 20 inch tire, and that's to drive the track capability. So we have so much torque in the system now, and we want to be track capable, the tire itself becomes a limitation. 
just having the grip on the straightaway to get up to 170 on the straightaway, but be able to hold that grip as you come into a turn. Axle again, it's a torsion differential, very familiar with everybody here, you know, bulletproof, that's why we put it in. So when you look out to the wheel ends, we've got all new arms, right? So we had to actually get packaged for a slightly bigger brake, um, slightly bigger wheels and tires. So again, unique arm setups for the GT500, again, different again from the 350. And then we look at the brake system. Uh, one way to think about it, the front brake is 16 and a half inches. There's 1965 Mustangs out here today that their entire tire isn't that size. <laughs> and why that came about, and if people drive 350s, I mean, you don't fade the brakes on a 350, but we've had to upsize the brakes on this vehicle to have that same performance of no fade, so you can get an idea how much faster we're going on the track that we need that increased capability of braking as we go into it. Again, six piston fixed calipers from Brembo, still the SHW where we have the aluminum center, iron on the outside, right? Just getting the weight down, but also getting more brake capability. So that's why we have a 20 inch wheel. The 20 inch wheel was driven by the fact we're too fast on the track, we needed bigger brakes, so we actually went to 20s and 19s. So that's kind of the evolution as you go through the chassis. And then what was really fortunate with us is we've been working with Billy Johnson extensively in the development of this vehicle. Again, it's so capable. We want to have a professional driver driving at various tracks with us. And what we're able to do with that, it helped us really give that electronic tuning for both the engine, transmission, gear selection, um, our ABS brake controls. We got all this software for that. And that gives us the ability to trail brake this vehicle with its amount of power. And then from the Magaride system that we've been using both on the base Mustangs and on the 350s, we got a lot of big partnership with that supplier called BWI, that we actually got new algorithms with that, and then we can change the setup of that car a thousand times per second, right? So as you go through the different modes of normal, sport, track, they all give you that different capability of, hey, I'm going to choose this selection to be this stiff as you go into a turn, we're measuring right height sensors in each corner, we're measuring your G's, right? We're measuring your pedal position. And we'll decide how to set up that shock electronically to really give you a flat, planted feel. So you won't get roll like on the 13 or all those other things as you drive into the corner at that speed. We can basically hold the vehicle up with that technology. So it's the integration of it is really what we'll spend the time on in the engineering that we can actually make sure we get the maximum amount of performance out of the vehicle. And I'll say uh, I'm kind of over budget on track time for the last two years, quite extensively. Um, but that's really what my team does. They live on the track, they'll drive on the track, and then we bounce it off our partners in, uh, in motorsports to make sure that it's an intuitive vehicle to drive. And then if you get into the styling, there's a lot of love in the details, right? And we do that way up front nowadays, right? So it's all done in the computer or our analytical processes. So when it comes to the appearance of it, uh, all that detail doesn't look chunky. It all looks fluid. And the only way you can accomplish that, we have a dedicated studio team in Mustang that, that's probably the fourth Mustang they've worked on. We have a dedicated aerodynamics team. This is probably their fourth Mustang. And that partnership we have is we do these Mustangs between the aerodynamics teams and the studio teams can create what is you know, 50% more airflow through the coolers and twice the front opening of a GT350, but it comes out as it's all fluid. The motion looks like it's moving when it's standing still. And that's all unique um, from the A-pillar forward to accomplish that task to match cooling capability and downforce. We're always trying to balance that out to actually flow more air into the cooling system to keep you endurance on the track, which is also key to a Shelby, but also give you that downforce so as you go into a curve or you go over a hump, you still have confidence that that vehicle is going to hook up. And that's a lot of why we have a relatively large heat extractor on the center of the hood. Uh, basically gives you the ability as you pop out a rain tray, you know, it's that decision if you want these going through or if you were at the track and that was our solution between those two things. You pop that out and it basically gives you more cooling capability because you're flowing through the radiator freer and it actually takes a lot of that downforce into the front end. And then you can balance it out at the back. We saw an optional wicker on the rear spoiler. So in general, 
That is how we accomplish what is the fastest Mustang on a track. We have the most powerful Mustang we've ever created at Street Legal. And uh, the only other stuff, if you look on the interior, again, as Jim said, a lot of what the GT500 is, is no compromise in straight line, no compromise in track performance, and then no compromise on the interior creature comforts. So again, we've brought over the digital cluster that's been successful on the base Mustangs. So now these are standard with a digital cluster with all that uh, interface that you've come used to where you can change the track modes, do track apps, and just have a real clean interface as you're driving on the track for, for what's really going on for speed and RPM. Okay, Jim, where'd you end up? Well, oh, Carl. Um, so, what do you think of what Carl and his engineering men and women of Ford Performance have done? Pretty good? I know Carol for sure would be impressed. Do we have the keys? Yep, we do. We have the keys. I know Carol for sure is looking down and is impressed with what, it, what we've done here. Uh, but I would rather the car speak for itself. So, Carl is going to take it through the various exhaust modes and you can hear this unique Shelby Mustang Roar. Go ahead, Carl. Good neighbor. That's the good neighbor. So for people in your neighborhood who yell at you for having too loud of cars and you're starting it too early on a Saturday morning. Ford Performance. Thank you for letting us be here at Carlisle, and uh, we truly appreciate it. We look forward to being back again. And uh, Carl will be driving this, leading the parade, not doing smoky burnouts in downtown Carlisle. So thanks again, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate it. So that is about it for this one, you guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.